here viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel so we got this 2007 Hondu CRV here money lights on it has your P0128 insufficient coolant temp took the car for a drive as I normally would uh, just like we've seen in my Honda Civic video you can see that the coolant sensors on these can fail it likely uses the same exact one uh, lo and behold, uh, this car warmed up very quickly from 28 degrees all the way up to its regulated temperature around 180. And then it stayed there, didn't deviate, what didn't drop, just held rock steady, good heat out of the car. Uh, so part of my diagnostic routine, as you guys know, is to always go on, just check code setting criteria and check TSBs early and often. Uh, in this case, there is a TSB on this car for this code, PO128, uh, back in, I think, late 2011. They came out with a uh, uh, flash programming update for it uh, to, to correct this code. Uh, what aspects of it it changes, I don't know. Didn't really look into it. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. We're going to do a, a flash programming update on it before we carry on with any other type of diagnosis. Because these procedures have to be done with the vehicle on, and oftentimes when you're programming, other accessories will turn on. Fuel pumps, cooling fans, all kinds of stuff. We will be using our OTC 700. Uh, I do have it set up in flash programming mode and it's going to hold just a steady 13 volts on there, clean power. Um, we can go through and see just with the key on, this thing's drawing about 12 amps, just, you know, just sitting there steady. And that kind of varies, like I said, as things, you know, kick on and turn off and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, you always want to be prepared, you know, even though this is, you know, a relatively new battery in this vehicle. So I already, like I said, I already drilled the vehicle, I just grabbed the Encore. Uh, you know got the code is the only code in it when I looked in freeze frame data It had stored the code like around 170 degrees, which I thought was kind of odd. So that's why I drove it uh, After seeing the TSB I did grab our Bosch VCI module. This is like a little a little Bosch commercial here <laughs> So I've got that plugged in I've got it hooked to my laptop I want to show you guys a couple uh, really useful websites if you're thinking about getting into programming uh, And you know kind of where you can go and learn quite a bit my suggestion would be if you're going to get into programming, which I don't do a ton of it, I'm definitely not an expert in it, do as much research as you can on which interface device to, uh, you know, to purchase, and it's best to find somebody in the industry that does it. I'm fortunate enough to be good friends with Keith. I'm also friends with uh, Sam over at Tool Hut USA, uh, both mobile programmers, uh, lots of experience, and very helpful. Um, you can see here on my laptop, I pulled up this website, uh, the NASTF, uh, so it's the National Automotive Service Task Force, I guess as it says right across the screen. They have a ton of stuff here on um, OEM, you know, programming, you know, which websites to go to, you know, where to get started. Uh, of course, this is where you'd register for your uh, locksmith ID and, uh, you know, all that stuff. But a lot of a lot of great information if you don't have this website already you know saved make sure you go through and save it I'll pop over here here is the copy of the TSB uh, I guess it came out July 2011 uh, it states you know what's you know what's going on that they came out with a uh, you know software update uh, for this so with that being said and just an example here uh, on the NASTF website, let's see, because I've already downloaded the Honda software uh, quite a while ago. Uh, let's say we wanted to go, you know, OEM reprogramming. Uh, let's see, we'll pick H for our Hondus. You come on here, and it's going to give you a lot of the information that you're going to need. Uh, you know, where to download the software, you know, how to purchase it, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. And they have all the OEMs listed there, uh, which is fantastic. So we will come here. Uh, this is where I have, I tend to store all my, you know, programming stuff in, in one folder and, you know, keep track of your usernames and passwords and all that stuff. We're going to go to Honda J2534 Rewrite. Now we're already hooked up to the car. We're just going to go through here. Of course, this gives you the warning about, you know, hooking up battery charger, um, you know, and so on. And then we're just going to let it, uh, the key is on. So we're going to let it start. It's going to go through and search the vehicle to see what systems are on it. And Honda will automatically check for, you know, service updates for you. So this can take a little bit sometimes. Should pull up um, the engine and trainee. Let it go 
through and like I say this can take you know several minutes now that that's finished uh, we're gonna leave it right where it is so you can select you know trainee engine controllers when we're gonna go for we're gonna hit select uh, and it brings us up here uh, current program ID uh, then they have the available update system, that program ID, the part number which matches, you know, this should match our service bulletin. Uh, and then update description, it's going to correct uh, P0, or a P1009 and the P0128, which is the one we're after. So we're going to hit enter, press enter to start control module update. And then, you know, a whole bunch of lights just turned on the dash. And then essentially just follow the on-screen instructions from here. So once that's done, like I say, just follow the on-screen instructions, turn the ignition switch off. It should go through, turn the ignition switch on within 60 seconds. ECU reprogramming has been complete, press enter. And then it appears there's likely an update here for the transmission, so we'll select that. Just to see what uh, what the update is, program part number. I'm gonna take before I do this update. I am just gonna double check into this because some updates, you know, are gonna require actual mechanical parts to be replaced. I don't want to goof anything up there, but uh, it just gives you an example. Now, if there wasn't an update for this, uh, if I remember correctly, that last screen that we we're at here will come up blank. If I remember correctly. The next step is to make sure you didn't turn it into a brick. Hey, we did good. So I'm going to go through, and we'll typically, you know, doing that clears the codes, and that's why I just wanted to make sure. Now, sometimes there are adaptations that need to be done. It's going to depend on what you're working on. You know, like on GMs, you're going to go through and do the, you know, crankshaft relearn. I'm going to double check to see if anything else needs to be done on this vehicle, and it's also, you know, good to keep in mind that your flash programming is not you know, your cure-all, end-all. This came in with a PL-128, 187,000 miles on it, no history on, you know, thermostat or anything on this vehicle. So don't skip your basic steps, you know, verify a customer complaint, drive it in this case, you know, check coolant, is the thermostat working, you know, these are notorious for the radiators leaking, is it, you know, do you have any other underlying problems uh, you'll see guys get caught up in this trap. As a matter of fact, we just had that video, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago, whenever it was, on that Chevy truck with the transfer case with the broken wire. You know, they took it to the dealer. The dealer flash programmed the TCM and, well, you know, we don't know, shipped it out of the door. Uh, I don't want to say in their defense, but they likely did that because there was a code in that uh, vehicle, that CO327, I believe it was, and there is a TSV on it for a flash programming update. Granted, did it need the update? You know, possibly, uh, but it also needed the original problem fixed. Uh, you know, in this case, I drove it. You know, I've already, you know, visual inspection, coolant's full, everything looks normal, coolant temperature sensor seems to work right, thermostat seems to work right. Okay, there is a software update. Let's do that software update. If the problem persists, then, you know, we'll, we'll take it further from there. So, you know, be mindful of that if you see a TSP that has, you know, a particular, uh, you know, update into it. Also, you know, just check to make sure. Uh, the other spot where you're going to see updates is, uh, you know, I'll see this a lot on Chrysler's. I think we showed a video doing this too uh, on their little, their 2.4 or whatever, intake manifold runner control valve. First one comes to mind. They have an updated intake manifold. You put it on, plus you have to install the updated software, you know, for that new manifold. Uh, there's lots of situations like that where, you know, you install an updated part, it's got new calibration files, you have to be able to do that. So, uh, getting, you know, working on cars is getting more difficult every day. So if you can, you know, start, you know, getting your, uh, getting your hands wet on this stuff, I guess, so to speak, you know, the time is now, uh, it's, it's definitely not going to get any easier, you know, particularly when I, you know, talk to Keith there at New Level, you know, the stuff that he has to do on these collision cars, 
uh, you know, this late model stuff, 16s, 17s, 18s, with all the, you know, lane departure business and, you know, collision avoidance and, you know, all that stuff. It's just, it's insane what it's going to be. So, your best to uh, jump on this train right now while you can. Uh, like I say, in the description box below, there's going to be links to uh, the tools I use in this video, the Bosch VCI that I use, the Charger, you know, the Encore. I'll leave links down there to the uh, NETSF website. Uh, lots of great resources out there. Get on board, get educated, you know, particularly find somebody that does this is always very, very helpful. And that's all I can tell you. So subscribe, social media is all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.